Time now for the NSCAA College Soccer Weekly, presented by the National Soccer Coaches Association of America, the largest soccer coaches organization in the world. The NSCAA is dedicated to providing the best in soccer coaching education and membership services and benefits. Check out NSCAA.com for more information. Yes, Ludwig Field, the campus of University of Maryland College Park, where the NSCAA is proud to get going with its 20-game College Game of the Week package, a matchup between number four Maryland and the Stanford Cardinals. Hello, I'm Dave Johnson and Keith Debatsik. Yeah, here we go. The hurricane has passed the Mid-Atlantic, but you know what? We expect a positive storm tonight. Yeah, there will be a positive storm. Every time you come to Ludwig Field, there is a lot of fans out. And by the way, Dave, I think that was one of the stories as we went through last year. As the season went on, the fans that were coming out, but realizing that college soccer is such a great value for the money, excellent play on the field, the excitement, and you're going to see this tonight, but all over. And already early in the season, there have been a ton of records being set in attendances all around the country. I think these uh, TV package on NCAA Fox Soccer has a lot to do with it, too. Well, indeed, we're going to have highlights of the maryland Stanford match a little bit later on, but let's go ahead and get to the uh, Continental Tire Top 25 and check out the rankings. Uh, what jumps out? Well, first of all, of course, Louisville at the top, and, and, and they should be. They were the runners-up last year, but they hardly lost anybody coming into this year, and they opened up with a 2 nothing win over UCLA. Akron, the team with a big bullseye on its back, had a tie against Cal Fullerton uh, after an opening win against Cleveland State. You bump down William & Mary, who had moved into the top 10, had a 3-0 loss during the week to St. John's. And by the way, don't rule St. John's out just because they lost 3-1 to Maryland. For a lot of that game, they were the better team. We continue with the Continental Tire. Top 25 is the, the second 10, also some impressive teams. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, West Virginia opened up the season with a big win over UVA, then came here to Ludwig Field on Monday night in front of 4,000. Gets ahead 1-0, but Maryland hot in the second half. Three goals to win that game 3-1. to one. UCLA, as we said, dropped their opener to Louisville, so they dropped out of the top 10. And SMU also dropping a little bit when they lost their opener to William and Mary, 3-2. to two. All right, we round out the uh, top 25, the final five. What, what uh, really stands out here? Well, first of all, Kentucky kind of coming out of nowhere, but opening up their season with two wins. And these were big wins against Michigan and Dayton. Ian Collins has his team going. And then, of course, Monmouth. You know, they keep not, they don't, they won't give them the respect, but they keep getting back into the top 25, and Monmouth opens up as well with a 1 nothing win over BU. All right, let's take a look at the KFC NSCAA Players of the Week. First on the men's side, you just mentioned the University of Kentucky. Well, absolutely, and this is uh, Tyler Riggs from the University of Kentucky. And both game winning goals in that opening weekend, and I'll tell you what, you know, he came off the bench for both of them. Ian Collins, start this guy. Maybe you win in regulation. Well, he certainly got it done for the uh, University of uh, Kentucky, so success for the uh, Wildcats. Now, for the women, the winner this week. Well, anytime you have UNC and Notre Dame matching up, it's a big one. Notre Dame, the defending champ, but UNC beats them as an overtime goal by Courtney Jones to get the player of the week on the women's side. All right, what about our game of the week tonight? Of course, between Maryland and Stanford, we had a chance to check in with the coaches and find out what to look for. Well, we have to be good in transition, and we have to be good on set pieces. They've got a couple of tall kids that are very good. Um, I think the bottom line is we have to play our game. We have to play Maryland soccer, and we have a connected performance. Uh, we have to come out in the first half and play well. The last two games, we've had great second halves. If we have a good first half, we'll be in good shape. I think the key for us is to play the way we want to play and not let the pressure of crowd or the pressure of Maryland's uh, defense allow us to uh, or force us into something that we don't want to play. So if the guys come up with the right attitude and... Uh, the right effort level I think will be fine. And here is how it played out in our KFC recap. Maryland didn't waste any time. No, 22 seconds in, it's John Sturzer playing the ball through and, and Mullins gets his first goal. Patrick Mullins in 22 seconds. And they didn't wait much longer after this. This is Casey Townsend taking the ball to the top of the box, turning left foot shot. It's 2-0, 10 minutes in for Maryland. Unassisted goal for Casey Townsend. He wouldn't be done, but before that, Hoge Lakebang has a free kick, his second one, and this one goes right in. It's unstoppable for him. 3-0 in the 28th minute. Just two minutes later, Casey Townsend from his striking partner, Patrick Mullins, this time with his right foot, puts it away 4 nothing, and that's how the game would stay the entire time. This was an incredible first half for University of Maryland. And Dave. that's all they needed uh, for the 4 nothing win over Stanford Cardinal. Brett Simon, the head coach of the Cardinal, 
wanted his team to at least win the second half. Well, they got a draw, a scoreless draw in the second half, but it was a better effort from them in the second half. Well, it certainly was, and, and I think if anyone comes out of Maryland during the season and say they had a scoreless draw over the whole game, they're going to be very happy, but certainly much better in the second half. Of, you know, of course, things are a lot different when you're down 4 nothing, you know, especially for, for Maryland coming out, and they probably took the foot off the pedal a little bit. They didn't play poorly, but here's the big thing. While Stanford did better, they created stuff. Will Swain, the goalkeeper from Maryland, did not have to make one save. There was not a shot on target for Stanford. I think that, that is a, obviously a huge issue there, despite creating stuff in the final third. Very much a team shutout for Maryland. Number four, Maryland gets a win 4-0. On the way on the NSCAA Game of the Week, hey, it's women's action. Wisconsin-Milwaukee up against Marquette. That's coming up on Wednesday on Fox Soccer. And then it's an ACC battle on the men's side. Duke taking on Virginia coming up on Friday, September 9th. This has been presented by the National Soccer Coaches Association of America, the largest soccer coaches organization in the world. The NSCAA is dedicated to providing the best in soccer coaching education and membership services and benefits. Visit NSCAA.com for more information.